How's it going everyone? So I'm pretty excited to show this particular product that I have today. Um, I reached out to a company called Lomography about two weeks ago about reviewing this product. If you have heard of Lomography, you're probably familiar with their film products, but they've been diving into optics and they have one of the most unique Leica M mount lenses called the Atoll 17 millimeter F 2.8 art lens. So this lens is a 17 millimeter ultra wide that opens up all the way to f 2.8, which is incredibly rare for a ultra wide M mount lens that's also rangefinder coupled. So if you're focusing through the rangefinder patch on your Leica M camera, then you can obviously focus through that without having to use an external viewfinder. This is quite the hefty lens and it doesn't feel cheap. There's 13 uh, glass elements in 10 groups eight aperture blades. This lens weighs about 445 grams without the cap. And this cap is actually pretty nice. It's got a little felt lining inside of it whenever you put it on and off. It's got a filter thread inside, if you can see that. However, I don't think this filter thread in here is actually practical. With a lot of ultra wide lenses, they have this lens pedal, which you can't remove because ultra wides tend to flare. So if you somehow sneak a filter in here, I don't know how you'd be able to get it out. Or if you have a polarizer or variable ND, I don't know how you'd be able to turn it. I would be very tentative to tell other people to try to put anything in here. Um, otherwise it might just get stuck. And finally, the price is 499 US dollars. And if you want to get the close focusing adapter from Lomography, it's $120. You can close down the close focusing distance, which is already 0.25 meters on this to 0.1. There's also a red indicator down here that will show you your hyperfocal distancing. Now, what this means is that if you line up all the red lines at the bottom that you see here, anything from 0.9 meters to infinity is going to be in focus. So if you're in bright daylight and you're taking this lens around for street photography or just casual walk around, all you need to do is make sure you set that red line on the indicator and just go around and shoot. Now for my personal experience, I really wish this aperture was not declicked. Anytime I'm trying to focus or just handling the lens, I would inadvertently turn the lens. So I'm either change my aperture, my focus, but otherwise it's really smooth to focus. Um, it's got a really nice dampened aperture ring too. The optics look great from the outside. There's nothing wrong particularly with this lens. It's a little hefty, but that's what you're going to get typically when you have a lens that can open up to something like f 2.8 and it's this wide. I kind of want to talk about why this lens is so unique. There really isn't any Leica M mount lens that's ultra wide. So for me, that's anything below 20 millimeters that opens up all the way to f 2.8. That's also rangefinder coupled. Next is also affordable. Most Leica M mount lenses that are under 20 millimeters are pretty expensive. The closest thing I can think of to this lens is the 15 millimeter Zeiss Distagon f 2.8 CM. And that lens is, I think, 4,750 US dollars and it's not even rangefinder coupled. Now I'm sure, you know, with Zeiss Optics, the image quality is stunning, but you know, blowing almost 5,000 US dollars without the uh, cost of the viewfinder involved is a little bit crazy to me. And you can get this for $500. Now, I think one of the coolest things when I got this lens from Lomography is that this, the ATOL box, it gives you all of the specs on the side, shows you what's inside the box. Now, the first thing you'll see is a little, uh, little flip book, and it's not uh, a straight up manual, but this is kind of like a guide of like how to shoot with ultra wide lenses. And it gives a lot of samples from other photographers that they have probably reached out to before the lens was released. It was actually incredibly helpful for me when I was trying to think about the types of compositions and photos that I would get with this. And then we get to the lens. And then in here you get the external viewfinder. There's been a lot of complaints when I looked up at the reviews about this, this lens and this accessory. It's nice that they include it in there and ultimately you don't need anything too crazy. You just need frame lines. I didn't even bother. I was like, all right, it's nice they included it, but I can do without. So I'm in New York City. So I did some street photography, just casually walking around. I ended up going to the Met. Amazing, beautiful museum in New York. 
in Central Park, I would highly recommend just going. And the ceilings and the space inside the Met Museum is massive. So I thought that was the perfect place to take it around. If you're shooting in spaces like that, it's almost mandatory to bring the ultra wide lens. I think this lens performed admirably. It was really dark in there, so I was pretty happy that it could open to f2.8. And the focus picking on the mirrorless body like a Sony a7 IV helped acquire focus. I mainly left it on the hyperfocal distancing if there was enough light, but otherwise I would just opt into f2.8 and just focus with my eye. Also took this lens to take some environmental portraits with my friend Amber and Lucas. They volunteered to model for me with some amazing wardrobe at the Oculus, which is near the World Trade Center in New York. So I had them pose in several locations inside and outside, and this lens can make your subject look very tall and dramatic and powerful. Now I wrote on a piece of paper about my likes and dislikes to, just so I could remember. It's very well constructed, it offers a very unique advantage of being an ultra-wide Leica M-mount lens that opens up all the way to f2.8 that's still rangefinder coupled. Like you're not gonna find that combination anywhere else for now. And if there is something else, then please leave a comment below. But as far as I know, this is the only lens. The hyperfocal distance indicator is super useful when you're just gonna go out and shoot. I use this like 80% of the time, unless I needed more light, then I'd stop down and then I would focus depending on the distance to my subject. But otherwise, I think it's a perfect walk around lens. Now to go on to the negatives of this lens, I just really wish this aperture was declicked. Like I move this all the time. Mammography for making a second version of this lens or more in this series of VTOL lenses, please just leave it clicked or maybe give people a little tool uh, to declick. I'm still a little confused why they left a, a filter thread in here for 67 millimeter filters. The element also protrudes, so the filter would basically have to be like a very tiny UV filter that you won't be able to really get out if you screw it in too tight. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of even having a filter thread in there. The viewfinder accessory that comes with this is just super cheap and honestly when I was shooting on my film camera I just... I just took it off. I felt like it drew more attention anyways. Um, and you have to get, basically press your eye um, into the viewfinder just to even um, see the frame line. Um, small complaint, honestly, the fact that they just threw it in there just so you have the option is pretty nice. And finally, there is some flaring. It's not the worst, actually, surprisingly, for a more affordable lens like this. Lomography really reinforced in their packaging marketing that this is uh, multi-coated. And I think they did a relatively good job so with this lens, I actually would surprisingly use this in a professional setting. Some of the shots I got were stunning. They surprised me. Definitely would use this with any like a mount camera. For mirrorless cameras, I still think there are better options, wide angle options out there with autofocus too. Uh, one thing I should mention is that there's no electronic connection. There's no six bit coding on this. So if you need your metadata from your lenses, this does not have it. There isn't a Lightroom profile to fix any distortion as far as I know, just so you're aware. No six bit coding, so no electronic information being passed through this lens to your camera. So who would I recommend this to if you take a lot of environmental portraits? Definitely this lens. If you do some travel and you don't mind carrying the weight of this thing, Excellent street photography, excellent architecture lens. Now I wish I could have shot a video project with this. That's typically how I test uh, lenses in a real world application. But um, from the two, three weeks that I had this and the photos that I've taken with this kind of satisfied me. I don't think there's really much more to say besides that Lomography made a pretty good product here. So if you have any questions about this lens, please leave a comment below. Um, if you have any corrections about anything that I said about this, um, please also mention or even your experiences with this lens. Shout out to Lomography again. Thank you so much for uh, expediting this lens over just so I could use it in time. And I have to sadly return this lens tomorrow. So thanks for watching.